we got a little song we say to welcome our guests. Come on, y'all sing it. Glad you came. meaningful and life-changing to help you move through the challenges of life? Then join Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church of Gastonia for an inspirational message prepared just for you. Praise Him. I said, can somebody praise Him? We're going to be decreeing that until God says so because you got to change what you're saying. If you want, if you want to elevate your trajectory, uh, in the things of God and in this life, you got to elevate what you've been saying. Come on, somebody. Turn with me, if you will. I've got two scriptures. The Lord's been speaking to me about 2020. The first scripture that I want you to go to, and I'm reading this particular one from the Message Bible. And it's Deuteronomy chapter number 2. And verse number three. Deuteronomy chapter number two and verse three. I'm reading from the Message Bible. And this is what it says. Then God said, you've been going around in circles in these hills long enough. Go north. Come on, somebody. North is up, right? All right, he says, you've been going around in circles in these hills long enough. Go north. All right, now go over with me to Romans chapter number four. Romans chapter number four. And I'm going to go back to the New King James. Uh, for Romans chapter number four. And while you're going there, we certainly give God honor and praise and thank him for all his benefits toward us. Don't you know you have benefits? Go to verse number 18. Romans four and four, four and 18. Who contrary to hope, in hope, believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb he did not waver or as the King James says stagger at the promise of God through unbelief but it was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform it. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I want to talk about breaking cycles and building systems. Will you look at your neighbor before you take a seat and say, neighbor, this is the opening word breaking cycles and building systems say neighbor this is my year to break some cycles say neighbor i don't know about you but i'm getting ready to build some systems that's going to cause victory to come in my life now let's give god a shot while you're taking your seat breaking cycles and building systems. Let me quickly say that you know how you've heard that term about what insanity is when you do the same thing over and over and expect different results. What do they call that? That's insanity. It, and, and every time I hear that, I think of all the places in my life that this statement applies. Every, every place that it applies to me, I think about that whenever somebody say you keep doing the same thing and expect different results and the reality is that it'll make you feel some kind of way isn't that right 
and, and let me help you feel better. Who's ever felt some kind of way when you heard that statement that it's insane? It makes you feel some kind of way. Let me help you to feel better. You're not by yourself. Tell your neighbor, I'm not by myself. Huh? Now, I hope that made you feel better for a moment because that's all there is uh, uh, because it's still insanity. Uh, all right. Um, the reason we keep doing the same thing is because we have not uh, become proactive in that area and put forth a determination to change. Somebody say, I've got to change. This is my year. I've got to change. Um, and, and we don't make the change for various reasons. Sometimes we decree that it's just too hard uh, to change. We become complacent. We become comfortable with dysfunction. Now that's real off, isn't it? When you become comfortable with dysfunction, sometimes people feel hopeless and, and they're full of fear and so forth. And what ends up happening is that you find yourself going around and experiencing cycles. Now, you all remember when we were kids, we used to go to the playground. How many of you used to ride the merry-go-round? You get on the merry-go-round and you would be riding and somebody else would be pushing. A couple of others would be spinning it around. It was carefree and they would spin you around and around until you got dizzy. Anybody remember that? Round and round. Now the reality is when you become uh, an adult, uh, that's the last thing that you want somebody to do is spin you around and around. Isn't that right? I know some folk, if you're like me, uh, just turning around almost causes vertigo in me. Much less spinning around and around. But if we aren't careful, we can find that our life is filled with cycles. Now, when we think about a cycle, uh, it's any complete round or a series of occurrences that is repeated and when you think about it winter spring summer and fall that that's a cycle you think about uh sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday uh saturday that uh, that's a cycle and and there are positive uh, and helpful cycles in life that that we need to own and embrace uh, then there are negative and destructive cycles in our lives. Anybody already identify some destructive cycles in your life? Come on, I need some honest people in here this morning. I said, can you already begin to think about some cycles and some places where you've been going around and around and around and you keep getting the same old results? Isn't that right? Now, when we consider the way that we think and the way that we behave uh, and the things that we find ourselves doing over and over, uh, uh, they have become the, the cycles and the patterns that we live by. Now, the results we see today represent the pattern of thinking and doing yesterday. Everything that showed up in your life now is a result of what you were thinking and doing yesterday. Ask your neighbor, what kind of results do you have? You see, these things develop uh, sometimes by our upbringing, by sometimes the environment that we're in. Sometimes it's cause of our personality and, and we have learned behaviors and, and sometimes it's by a lazy spirit. We, uh, we, we're just too lazy uh, to become proactive and do what's necessary uh, to change. Now, when we develop positive cycles, we will see that we walk in victory and we have success and we move to new levels and, and we walk in the abundant life that Jesus said uh, that he came to give us. Isn't that right? When we develop negative and destructive cycles, they cause us to live frustrated lives and, and limited lives. And, and sometimes we find ourselves uh, living in defeat. Now, we're in a new year and, and uh, we're in a new uh, cycle. And, and you've seen how in years before uh, we come into the new year and we get on the cycle of, of 
It's January and and uh, we got our, our back straight and we're looking forward. We got it together and we are decreeing this is our year. How many of you said that uh, in some years past? This is my year. This is my year. I'm getting ready to move. I'm getting ready to do the things I have missed. And then by March, you've already slacked off a little bit. Huh? And then by June, what you were so set on in January, you just do it every now and then. That bicycle you got for Christmas is clothes rack now. And then by December, uh, you have uh, missed it so much that now in December, you're saying, I can't wait until January because when January comes, I'm going to get it together and beginning next year is going to be my year. And you've done that 10 years for the last decade. That's what you said year in and year out. You started on fire in January and before you knew it, in December, you were looking and expecting God, if you keep me to January, if you let me get in to the new year this is going to be the year I promise I'm going to change I'm going to do something different you know I address the cycles in my uh, book this time I win I talk about the sin cycles that the people of God were on they uh, they they would worship God and, and for a while and then uh, they would begin to become attracted uh, to the idols and the people around them and they started living like the people and then God would allow the enemy to come in to overtake them and they would live in bondage and, and then they would cry out to God and God and they would repent and say, God, if you give me another chance, if you work with me this time, uh, we're going to stay on the right track. And God would send in a judge and the judge would get the people back on the right track and they would worship God for a while. And then before you know it, they were becoming attracted again. It's a sin cycle. And sometimes it's so easy uh, to get on these cycles. And, and the challenge is when there are negative and destructive cycles uh, that sometimes we can feel so overwhelmed because of the results that we won't even attempt to break out. Uh, and, 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 and we won't even attempt to break the deadly cycle. So what does it do? It continues on and on and on. Many people have come and you uh, are here this morning and you have been circling the mountain like the children of Israel. That's what, that's what uh, God said to the people. He says, listen, you've been going around in circles. Over and over and over, he said, it's time to turn northward and go forth to the promised land. Now, understand something. When they started the process, it was just an 11-day journey. When you read in the Bible, when they were leaving Egyptian captivity, and when they were going to the land of promise, it was just going to take them 11 days. And it ended up that God said to them and said this to them on the 40th year. Come on now. 11 days, they should have been shouting. We're going in. But it's been 40 years. For, come on now. 40 years. Here we go around in circles. Huh? 40 years, 11 days. Come on, somebody. 11 days. And now they're at the 40th year and they've been circling. And he says, listen, you've been going around this mountain. You've been going around and around. It's time for you to go in. Uh, will you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you've been circling long enough. You've been on the cycle. Long Come on, minister to somebody and say, you've been on the cycle long enough. It's time for you to turn north. If this is your year to turn north, my God. And some people, even now, you have come into 2020 on a cycle. 
Somebody is decreeing, listen, you're saying that I should have finished that thing by now. I should have gone in by now. I should have accomplished it. Uh, I should have made it by now. I should have broken through uh, by now. I, I should have covered that thing by now. And, and you're coming into 2020 and you're saying I've been on this cycle. And my God, it, it looks like uh, what should have already been accomplished. You're still talking about, are we there yet? And let me tell you something. You have come into 2020 and I decree that as you have uh, come into 2020 and you got some cycles of defeat, you got some cycles of destruction, you got some cycles of poverty, you got some cycles of brokenness, infirmity I want to tell you they are ending right now. This is your year to break the cycle. This is your year uh, to stop going around in circles. I don't know everybody's particular situation but I know the people of God, how we run hard after God and then we slip back off and then we get frustrated and some of us almost give up on God and say listen there's no need in continuing to pursue we're not going to get to go in it's not because as he said God is not able it's on us the promised land was always prepared for them the promised land was prepared for them on the first day just like it was prepared for them on the 11th day and just like it was prepared for them on the 40th day the issue was they didn't have the faith to go in and to break the cycle but will you have your neighbor and say neighbor you getting ready to shift right now you getting ready to break some deadly cycles in your life and I promise you that this 2020 is going to be your year to break some cycles and to build some new system and I want to encourage you you've been frustrated you've been aggravated you've been feeling like throwing in the towel but thank God that he spared me and he brought me in the 2020 devil you should have killed me in 19 devil you should have caused me to uh, be overtaken in 19 because I have made it to 20 and 20 is going to be my cycle breaking year I wish I had somebody give God a shout in here I remember when we were riding those merry-go-rounds they would spin it and you sitting in the middle you trying to figure out how you gonna get off? How my God! And you and you get you get some of those little crazy rats and they they would spin it hard. They knew some of those bigger guys. They knew and and, and you just said and what you know what you had to do. You just had to decide that that I'm just gonna jump off of this thing. And I just got to tell somebody this morning that it's time for you to get ready to jump off the cycle. You might, it might throw you down for a minute. It might cause you to have to regain your self composure. You might have to get over a little per, uh, temporary dizziness, but you got to jump off of what's been spinning you around in cycles if you're going to go forth in the name of our God. 2020 is a new year it's a new decade and i don't want us to be decade impaired you know what that is don't you uh, you see some people who are decade impaired you know they, they they here it is 21st century they still act like they in the 20th century they dress like they're in the 20th century you see some people you went to school with in the 70s, when I grew up in the 70s, you know, that was the what's happening years, and what's up, and all that, and they still walking around, like, what's up, dog, and all that. I'm like, man, come on, we, we 62. <laughs> what, you know, what, what it is, bro? Huh? Still talking like, you know, and I, man, you decade impaired. It's time, come on, catch up, catch up. Uh, I don't want to be decade impaired. Uh, what did you look like and what did your life look like 10 years ago? The truth is when we said 2020 years ago, it sounded like a time we would never get to. Come on, 20. We didn't take time to calculate what the actual years were. But when they said 2020, things are going to be like that. Things are going to be like this. And we thought, good gracious, that's so long ago. I can't even imagine. Here we are uh, in uh, the new millennium. And here we are 20 years in. And what did your life look like 10 years ago? Think back. 2010. God, it's amazing. I remember things distinctively from 2020 what 2010 what has gone well 
What has not gone well in the last decade? What did you experience? What can you look back and see through your experience that what you have learned, what did you learn from it? What were your habits, the cycles that you established that, that need to be demolished? Ten years. Can you imagine ten years have passed? How many of you remember 2010? Just like yesterday. There, there were things that you began, there were things that you set, there were things that you envisioned. There were things that you picked up and before the decade was over, you had already put those things down. There were some changes that you said you were going to make in 2010 uh, that you were going to start operating in a different way that have still not been done. We're 2020. Think where you would be if you had stayed the course. If you had kept doing it, if you had not gotten distracted, if you had not become discontented and disillusioned uh, and disengaged, think where you would have. I started working on a doctorate of ministry back in 2010 uh, that I should have finished in 2013. And here we are in 2020 and it's still not done. So I'm not just talking at you. I'm talking with us. But this next 10 will be your decade and it starts now. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it starts now. Look at the other neighbor. They weren't paying attention. Say, neighbor, it starts now. It starts now. And listen, it's going to happen because we are going to sow into this first year of the decade. And of course, a decade, you know, 10 years. So really, 20 2020 is your tithe year. Oh my God. Come on somebody. I want you to understand now what you sow and what you do and what you establish in 2020 will be the first of what will happen in the next nine years. Come on somebody. That's why I say in 2020 you got to watch what you're speaking. You got to watch what you're saying. You got to watch the things you've been doing or before you know it you're going to have the same kind of decade in the, the 2020s that you had in the 2010s. But is there anybody who in this year this is my tithe year. This is my 10th part of the whole. I'm getting ready to do some things. I'm getting ready to make some shifts. I'm getting ready to do some things that are going to be different. I'm breaking some cycles in 2020 that's going to help me all the way uh, to 2030. I wish I had somebody in here. You might not be able to see it, but you better get your vision like Dr. Freeman told us the other night. You got to get your vision back. You got eyes, but you might not have a vision. You can have a vision without eyes, but some people have eyes and no vision. I see where I'm going. I see what is set before me. An open door. I don't have anybody in here. Look at your name and say, neighbor, there's an open door that is set before you. You better lay down in this 10th part. You better lay down in this first year of this new decade of that that is going to establish your way for the next 10 years. Now, can I just say this to us? In order for it to happen, we're going to do something different. We got to decide that we're not shouting and jumping and running over anything that we're not willing to break old cycles and build new systems in the beginning of the year. You know how we get excited when we come to the first part of the year and we'll shout, we'll run about what our year is going to be like and then we do nothing to change it. I want you to listen. If you don't have it in your mind uh, that I'm getting ready to break some cycles and build some system, when people start talking about what's going to happen, you just sit there. Keep your mouth closed and say, I'm not going to participate in that because of my mind is I'm going to keep on doing what I've been doing. And if you keep on doing what you've been doing, guess what? You're going to keep on getting what you've been getting. So whenever we begin to shout about breaking cycles, if it ain't in your spirit, you go ahead and sit there. Watch everybody else shout. Watch everybody else run because I ain't shouting over nothing else that I ain't willing to go in and break the back of. I ain't celebrating over anything that's a possibility if I'm not willing to get up and get the strength in that thing. I, come on, tell your neighbor, don't be shouting over things that you're not going to change.
Because we shout and praise and often don't have the true hope uh, that what we shouted about, what we declared will even happen. Huh? Because the hope of it really happening is not in you. You can be on a bad cycle so long until you don't even see a way. You don't even envision a way. Huh? You can't even see it. You shout with it because it sounded good. But when you sit down, you sit back down in defeat. Because that same devil will say, just look at you jumping and acting and shouting. You're going to be right. I'm going to keep you right here with me. I'm going to keep your mind shackled right here like it was shackled in the last decade. I'm going to keep you broke in this next decade like you've been broke in the last. I'm going to keep you frustrated in this decade like you were frustrated in the last decade. You can go on and shout and dance, uh, but you know your mindset. You know where you've come from. You know who your people are. You know nobody's broken out. You know nobody has owned anything. You know nobody has gone into business uh, in your family, has accomplished anything in your family, and the devil will tell you to sit there, and then you sit there and he's talking in your ear he's sitting on your shoulder he's speaking in your spirit you're not going to break out of that sickness you're not going to break out of that disease you're not going to break out of that addiction I'm going to hold you right here I'll let you shout I'll let you run I'll let you praise but the reality is come on because you're going right back to the same hell hole but I wish I could get somebody today say devil you are a liar you are a deceiver and I am going to begin to believe the truth of the word of God I'm going to be begin to believe what God said about me. I'm going to begin to decree things. I've been saying the wrong thing. I've been speaking the wrong thing. But I'm changing who I declare that I am. High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is your year to break the cycle. See, you, you consider your present quality of faith and hope and you never attempt. So then another year passes and the cycle remains because it is easier to shout now and do nothing later. Come on, I, I said something right there. <laughs> that, I think that's worth a little more than that. It's easier, let me say it again because they didn't hear it. It's easier to shout about it now and do nothing about it later. Come on somebody, how many of you shouted uh, in church? And you did nothing when you left. If you're going to break cycles and build systems, we must do as Abraham, the father of nations, did. And I just want to, uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share this opening part here. And, um, and I think we'll, we'll, we'll save the rest. Romans, go over to Romans chapter number 4. Romans chapter number 4 and um, verse number 18. Let me see. I'm, I'm going to go back to the King James because he, he says this in verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Now, now that thing there, when he said uh, against hope, he believed in hope. Sounds a little confusing. Paul suggests that the first kind of hope, where he said who against hope, is that in which one has sort of uh, thought of the possibility that it could happen, but there's not really much to rely on it actually happening. You encounter situations that appear to be hopeless. This kind of hope will cause one to begin to think logically. Somebody's early 2020 looks logically impossible. Logically impossible. That's that first kind of hope. Nah, maybe. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't. It seems improbable. 
you, you have been on a cycle of brokenness and misery you have seemingly come to a place where you try to have hope and you think maybe i can break the cycle and you're looking at your situation through the natural eyes of hope and you become discouraged you look and the mountain of bills are too high the mountains of of family problems too high the job issue too high i'm hearing Everybody and seeing people excited and I'm trying to grab it, but this kind of hope that I'm dealing with, it is not moving me anywhere. It's not taking me anywhere. I'm looking at my situation through natural eyes. And, and if we came this year into the new year and the new decade with a sense of, I hope this year is better. I hope I can turn things around and that, uh, uh, that, that is hope, but that hope has no real basis for victory. It is fleshy, it's shifty, it's wavery, rather than the fact that we need the hope that is supernatural. Somebody say, you need a new kind of hope. Well, say, I, look, tell your neighbor, I don't know what you need. I'll tell you what I need. I need a new kind of hope. Because if, if, there's, if there's one thing in you that God said you should be and do, and it hasn't been done, you need a new kind of hope. Isn't that right? Um, understand here, you need supernatural hope that is founded on the word of God. Abraham hoped knowing his age and condition. He hoped in the one who promised it. Hope begins to change depending upon the object of the hope. When you get a promise from God of what he will do in you and through you and for you, you got to put that hope that was hope on the hope and put it now in the hope that's supernatural. I got to get rid of my fleshy hope and I got to move and believe against that hope and begin to believe in the supernatural hope. This is the kind of hope that defies logic. This is the kind of hope that defies the fact. This is the kind of hope that defies reason. And this year, this year, the cycles that you break and the systems you build are going to call for a hope that is supernatural. You are not going to be able to be sustained on the hope that you had from 2010 to 2019. You got to have a new kind of hope. Tell your neighbor you need a new kind of hope. This is a hope that will not stop at resistance. This is a hope that will not stop at discouragement. This is a hope that will keep persevering even when it looks like I'm in a storm. I know that if I'm in this storm, God's going to bring me out of it. If I'm at a place now of even bankruptcy, God can still raise me up and take me to new. I wish I had somebody in here. Yeah, Abraham hoped against hope. And I want to encourage somebody. I want to encourage somebody because, because when, you read, when you read the scripture there in Romans chapter number 4, uh, man, Abraham sounds outstanding, doesn't he? Who against hope? Paul's talking about Abraham. Believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And look at verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was even a hundred years old. And they didn't have any blue pills. Oh, he was, he had that kind of faith. Huh? A hundred years old. And neither did he consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. That's a bad man. Look at verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith giving glory to God in verse 21 
and being fully persuaded that what he had been promised, he was able also to perform it. What uh, he who had promised it was able to perform it. So Paul is saying, listen, God uh, uh, had Abraham in such a place that when Abraham was told that he was going to have a son and that uh, that Jesus was going to come through his family line and he didn't have a seed, he even in his old age, hope against hope. But can I encourage somebody? There is room for advancement from wherever you are right now. Because the truth of the story is that Abraham was not always at this point. Paul is talking about Abraham in the last stages, but I want to tell you about how Abraham was just like us in his Abram days when God gave him a promise. Uh, it says here he didn't stagger, but the reality is that he did some staggering. He had some unbelief. He didn't walk right into the promise. So I want to encourage somebody. I didn't say what I said this morning to knock you down, to make you feel bad, to make you uh, regret 2010 to 2019 I just told you about those cycles we've been on because if you've been on a cycle of brokenness if you've been on a cycle of despair just like Abram he was on a cycle of unbelief there is hope for you that you can come off of that cycle and you can get to the point where Abraham is now but next week I want to take you back and bring you through how Abraham got to this point where he hoped against hope how he got off the cycle is there anybody this morning who's tired of the cycle come on if you're tired of the cycle stand on your feet this morning if you're tired of being on the cycle you've been going around and around that same mountain that same project that same uh financial situation that same family situation you've been going around and around and around time to go north and this decade is your going north decade. And this year, the first year, the 10th year, is your tithe year. I'm not talking about bringing in an offering. I'm talking about the year that represents that the first fruit. And that that which comes first blesses and sets the pace for what is to come. So this year, you got to be strategic. I want to tell you some things next week on how to get this done. We're going to be talking about this because it's so crucial. In Bible study, our first lesson, we're going to be studying you next. You're next. Somebody say, I got next. And it's going to be requiring us to break some cycles. We got some family cycles. We got some financial cycles, relationship cycles. We do the same thing over and over and expect different results. Come on, give God a praise right there. Are you in? Let me see who's in. I if you're looking for dynamic worship, inspirational teaching, and a friendly atmosphere, you can visit us on Sundays at 221 West Bradley Street in Gastonia, North Carolina. For more information about our ministry, you can call 704-865-9016. To order your personal copy of today's message or any other broadcast, please call 704-865-9016 and indicate the broadcast date. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast with Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church. Make sure you join us next week at the same time. And remember, let God take control and let the Spirit flow.